Welcome back to our class, Genesis, the Conflict Over Creation. We're glad that you joined us to study how to handle and carefully interpret the opening chapters of the book of Genesis. Our instructor is James Rochford. In this episode, we will evaluate the six-day revelatory interpretation of Genesis 1. The six-day revelatory interpretation states that God revealed how he created the universe to Moses over the course of a literal week, but not that he actually created the universe in a literal week. Proponents of this view would include P.J. Wiseman, who was a British soldier and diplomat, as well as his son, Donald J. Wiseman, who was a respected Assyriologist, and, most notably, Bernard Ram, in his book, The Christian View of Science and Scripture. How might we picture this perspective? Well, just imagine that Moses was up on Mount Sinai with God. On the first day of the week, God turns to Moses and says, Moses, I created light. Think about that. Moses reflects on the statement for a full day, he writes it down, and then there was evening and there was morning. The next day when Moses wakes up, God returns to him and says, Moses, I was the one who created the sky and the waters. Again, Moses reflects on this. And again, Moses writes this down, exactly what he heard. And then there was evening and morning. Well, you can see where this is going. God continues to tell Moses the subsequent acts and aspects of his creation of the universe over the course of a week. Under this view, God's creation didn't happen in six days, but God's communication took a six-day period to reveal to Moses. Donald J. Wiseman writes this, The six days refer to the time taken to reveal to mankind what was prior to his own creation. That God rested or ceased on the seventh day was not because the creation process was done, but for man's sake and because the process of revelation of what God had done was now completed or finished. Advocates of this view make a number of observations to support their perspective. For one, ancient Near Eastern creation accounts were often divided into six sections. Wiseman writes this, As was traditional in the earliest ancient Near Eastern accounts of creation, the text was originally written in six separate divisions. The matter could be a summary of various statements God made verbally as he made his revelation. For instance, the Anuma Leish also has a six-fold division of the creation account. Second, the use of day refers to the recounting of the events, not the events themselves. Proponents of this view understand Genesis 2-4, this is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, to be a summary of the histories which God revealed in Genesis 1-1 to 2-3. Wiseman writes, In the day may indicate the time of the authorship of the account. Jewish tradition is that the secrets of early creation were shown to Enoch over seven days. He is said to have walked with God. Genesis 5, verse 24. Critics of this view point out that there isn't anything in the text that would advance this perspective. In fact, the human author, Moses, isn't even mentioned at all in this text. If this was actually intended, then surely the author would have added some commentary, such as, then on the second day, God revealed another aspect of creation. When Moses received God's moral instructions on Mount Sinai in Exodus chapters 19 through 20, He describes the passage of time involved in this revelation. Surely Moses would have mentioned these details if this was the intention. Moreover, Genesis 2-4 doesn't refer backwards to Genesis 1-1-2-3. The Masoretes, 
uh, hence the Masoretic text, added a mark between Genesis 2.3 and Genesis 2.4 to show that this was a new heading looking forward, not backward. Based on its usage, Genesis 5.1, 6.9, 10.1, and so forth, the vast majority of Old Testament scholars hold that this term, this is the account, the Hebrew word toledot, is a new heading that looks forward, not backward. In conclusion, there is just simply nothing in the text which would make us believe that God was revealing his creation over these six days rather than actually acting in history. While this view may be appealing to some, it just simply is not a persuasive view of Genesis chapter 1.